Christ in this church. It, it's, a, it's a very, very great sign we should all take note and uh, find a way to invest into that department. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a great future. Amen. Okay. Then we're going to get into the word this morning. And let's bow down our heads in praise. Father, I want to say thank you in the name of Jesus. I thank you so much for what you have done, even for us, the church. We want to say thank you again, even what we experienced last week, the way you glorified yourself, even though we came together in agreement to give unto you, but it is you who provided us to bless you. And we thank God that we receive our blessings that will return to us much more blessings. We say, hallowed be thy name. And Papa, even this morning, speak to us. Cause us to understand your word in your own level at which we will live by the word and not just be hearers and deceive our souls by turning away. We know by your grace you've granted us this humble request in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, uh, thank you. Let's put our hands together and bless God. And I want to thank all of you also. The church have surprisingly been lifted by the grace of God with your gesture, by the way you've shown love to me even this time of my good birthday. Hallelujah. I appreciate and thank all of you. Now we will get into the word of God. And uh, our this morning word is on the team breaking news. Oh, I'm telling you. And I tell you, this this our breaking news is a good news. <laughs> this one is a good news. <laughs> it's a good news. It's a good news. Yeah. This is a breaking news. A good breaking news. And uh, you know what? <laughs> All this time, since ever Papa Trump came, breaking news is not a news thing. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, everything has been lifted to a high and levels. So <laughs> things that are breaking is not even breaking. But let me tell you, this is a breaking news. I, I was listening to our president, I guess, last Thursday or Wednesday, and he was so sweet in presenting. He said, listen, you will be shocked with the budget that I'm giving, I'm dashing you at the ever-experiencing Christmas gift or whatever. <laughs> I hope you were hearing it. <laughs> and uh, people were listening carefully and expecting the type of gift that was coming. And then all yesterday, I was listening to the news, breaking news, breaking news, the budget is out, and that was the expecting breaking news and Others are excited, others are asking questions, others are doubting, others are believing, others are whichever. And we thank God for it, but that is how it is. You can't blame him, you can't blame anybody. Man's breaking news has questions and here and there. But let me tell you, with God's breaking news, it has no any mixture of whichever. It can be any politicizing or political correctness or incorrectness. Man's coming from God's throne, breaking news is always sound and is for your benefit and your good. Now, let me tell you, God, if is to read budget in this church, then it is today. And that is why I'm saying, when I heard the budget God was reading for the church and for that matter for you, throughout all the news was breaking and super breaking news all out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I heard God who was switching things into your interest, making sure it works well for you. And that is very true. Actually, in normal sense, you must say, what is pastor talking about? But let me also ask you, so do you think we will go to that almighty God and out of our toil and blood and all what we have gathered throughout the whole year and you say, God, we present it to you and God will say, okay, thank you for presenting it to me. Go with an empty hand. No, I don't think so. And if you don't know, let me refer you even to the gospel or to the scriptures by the Bible, even through it or from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Anytime the Israelites are privileged and go before the Lord and their sacrifices and harvest are accepted, listen, they come back with different levels. 
people of enthusiasm. They come back with joy and all happiness, believing that that year things are going to be different. And so for us to come before the Lord and with the surprising thing that happened last Sunday here, I can bet you that the breaking news is already broken all over. And so God is about to surprise you. There are some things that are going to take place race and here and there and that you will know that the Lord that we serve is great and the most breaking news I'm talking about is listen to me how do you see it and how are you going to even extend it how are you going to share it when you hear that tomorrow next the most millionaire the most billionaire in town is coming from this church Amen. won't that sound the great news I want, I want you people to embrace things this morning. Yes, embrace it. it it's coming. And, and hopefully, let, don't, don't let someone take himself out. Hopefully, it is me. What do you say? Oh, take it. That's what I want. Because uh, trust me, I'm not going to count myself out. <laughs> I also need it. But I want you to also plug in. That's the breaking news. You know that after this great work done, God is going to turn around things. Then the breaking news is go to town. Something good is happening. That wife, that insubordinating wife has turned around and is the most humble and lovely wife in the house. Isn't it a breaking news? Is it a good news to embrace? I, 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 all what I'm trying to say is I want you to, from today going, to me, 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 psych yourself, make up yourself, set up yourself, expecting all that is coming, all is good, and it is well with you. <clears throat> I call it a breaking news because I can see that things that people hear about you and also all the time turn around and feel so feeble and sad, this is brought to an end. <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's see from our test. I want to read for you from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 6, 7, and me. Chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. You can read with me. I will like that. Go. Be anxious for nothing, but in ever by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, with God your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The seven is what I like so much. Let's repeat seven. Go. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, with God your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Can you accept this as a breaking news? I'm telling you, no more worry. That's the breaking news. Oh, thank you. Thank you, even in time of my birthday, whatever you brought. But if I don't have peace of mind, if I'm still the same person who will be going through all those turbulences, then, then what will be the worth of all this great? Jackets you brought to me, the shoes and the rest, the money, the checks and all that. But here, the gospel, the good news, Jesus Christ through his instruction by his servant is advising, adhering as that, the peace of God, that passes all understanding. That's the news I'm giving to you today. I don't know is listening to me. I don't know what you are going through, but I can guarantee you in this turbulence world, whether you like it or not, you are part of it. So you will be experiencing the things that will be going on. Hallelujah. Somebody was presenting something about the world, and this is very true. You see, he said that the rip, the rip of the world is the uh, the side of the Caribbeans. That is why when you see world map over there, you see so many islands and water and the rest there. 
And he said, through some, so many things that the world is going through, and the shakings and everything, the rip has become weak, so anything can happen. That's geographically true. You do your readings and you will see. It can even turn, it can be doing anything, because when the rip is weak, there can be a shift. You see, so I'm trying to say that this world we are in this day, if somebody tells you that it's peace and it is all well, please take it as a big lie. But here, the Bible is telling us that in the midst of this, we can have peace. We can have peace. And the why and how that peace can be attained is what I want to be interested in today. And the how is, Bible is telling you and I that first of all, be never in your life from today going, be anxious for nothing. Take it. This is from Bible. Please, if you can swallow this tablet of Bible, it will result and work for you. God is saying we shouldn't be anxious about things for nothing. In the sense that even with all the wisdom and intelligence of King Solomon, he couldn't add even an inch to his height. So that means with all your try and anxiousness and uh, fabricating and worrying yourself about things that are going on around you, about your children, about the business, about the setup, about I mean, the rest. Bible is saying, get yourself out of all those thinking and troubles. If you take this from the Lord, then I can tell you that the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will surely be experienced in your life. Then did he say you should not be anxious for nothing and just lay your hands on your chest and sleep? He says no. He is saying that things are going to happen. I am giving you a word. Because let me tell you, if I don't tell you this, and immediately after you have given to God, when you start to see things, don't come and say that, oh, did I give to God and this are happening. God knows his word. He knew the very word that out of it he took give. And so he knew the very word that he can give as a word of an advice for you, for you to be cushioned and wait for his blessing. For you to wait and wait for what he has spoken concerning your life. He says, in all things, when you see them around, coming here and there, be anxious for nothing. Don't, don't, don't be detailed. Don't be disturbed. Don't worry. You've prayed over so many things and you haven't seen them. There. Don't worry. Wait. Wait patiently. They are coming. It is tough for you. It is addressed to you. Surely it's coming. Thank you. And he says the way to wait and expect and receive them, he says in everything, what should you do? Take it into the Lord in prayer. That means tell God about it. Tell God about it. Listen to me. Now the doors of heavens are open. With the fragrance and the sweet saliva of your giving and sacrifice has opened God's door widely unto you. But what is left now is for you to talk, talk, talk. Tell him the way we talk and communicate with God is through prayers. That is, I'm trying to say that the devil will destabilize you through the businesses, through the caring through the church, through so many circumstances and avenues. I'm prophesying. You won't do it without this. You won't see the glory without this. It shall happen. But listen, if you pass this, you're going to enter into your zone. When you see things so tempting and so bustling, please, God says, take unto him in prayers. It could be the business. It could be the marriage. It could be the letter you have received. It could be something that is going on back home, here. It could even be your health. Please, don't say that, oh, what is this? What is this? What? No, don't complain. But take into the Lord in prayer. This is the best advice God can give to me and to you and to all of us. He says, when we pray, we talk to God about things. He will, by his power, turn around things. 
He said, let your request be made known. Listen to me. The only mistake you will make is this time of error that the Lord's ear has come so down. You will sit down lazy carry without putting your request to God. Is someone here that has got a list? <laughs> Some of the children are telling me uh, they understand uh, Father Christmas. Is that Father, what is Santa Fe will be coming? Santa Claus. <laughs> Sorry. He will be coming. Yeah. What is he coming with? I mean, I don't know. What is he coming? It's the list. He's coming to answer their list. Someone says he believes in him. And I'm trying to tell you, this is the great Father Christmas. Santa Claus. Breaking news. Just make your list. Put it before him. He says, and let your request be made what? No unto God. God is your Father Christmas. God is your everything. He is the supplier of your needs. I'm, 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 I'm saying, uh, if I had any better message today, I would have preached it to you. But I'm saying, God says, with what you did last Sunday, if you sit down and you don't let your request be made known to him, then you do yourself a disservice. That is why you should not worry. Instead of worrying, turning it into prayers and made it be a request and known unto him. You can make it known, on, thank you. You can make it known unto anybody or anyhow, but first let it be made known unto God. And then he says that if we make the request be known unto God, then what I said, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I have something I want to share with you before I go forward with this. Just uh, last Friday was my birthday, am I right? That, that on the Friday. In fact, on Thursday, I was so enthusiastic that this time, which the church, we had such a good harvest. I'm going to be very happy on Friday and that. And then just Friday morning, we got up and we realized that our this thing, our house heater has broken down. And look at this mist of uh, cold. It, it was so severe. And then also I have made an appointment to meet some people because I, I, I'm putting some team of the curators together. They have to design the place and all these things so that I can get a list and present it for what we plan to do with our harvest money. So after I came to meet them and I dined with them, I met with those who came to do the church gate because I promised to give a security in this house. And we are working on it. Very soon, you'll be sitting here and there will be indicators somewhere. There comes evil. Thank God for that. But physically, we're going to put things in place to check and balance here. And we're working on it. Security things, I can say everything here as well too. So after I done with all this thing, I went to, in fact, actually, if you called me on last Friday, you could see from the way that I was talking that I wasn't a comfortable man. Because it's like everything bombarding from every angle. And I said to myself, how? I mean, what can I do for my family? How can we even enjoy in such a day of birthday? So we tried to call someone to come and check everything for it. And then the person said, oh, the way where he is, and he is our special uh, repairer. He said, the place that he is, there is no way he can make it. So if we can buy some heaters and the rest, I said, hey, the way our house is and the way the cold was, I don't know amount of heaters you can buy to take care of this. So he promises the next day he's coming to fix it for us and then we waited patiently. We went through one night with that endurance. And the next morning, he called me right about five o'clock morning. And he said, you know what? Um, I, I examined the, 
the system and the fan has broken down and the system is an old system. So if I want to fix the fan, it's very expensive. He was preparing me for what is coming for. And I said, okay, I'm on my way to the shop. And when I get there, I will let you know how much it costs. And he went to the shop. He called me. He said it costs um, how much? 1200 for only the fan. And just to change the fan before he tackles the next problem that associated with. So he called me and he said, but if you face even this fan, and the way the machine is an old house machine, anything different will come, will double the cost, double the cost. So I advise you, change the whole system. And if you want to change the whole system, that will cost closely 4000 which is about uh, 3800 And then when he was talking to me, I was meditating in my head. That's what I say in everything, take into the Lord in God. Pray. Even that time, I had a cause to be furious. I had a cause to be upset. But I determined not to talk. I determined not to do anything. I determined to find a way to provide for my family. I was doing everything just to make sure I provide for my family. And then when he, means, he advised me that if your side, we can do something, you can get a little heat and the rest buy them. I said, no, that even have made me mad. Jesus came for Christmas for all of us. How can I, big man, rather have a heat and let the house? So that was what even plugged me off from his way. So I decided, hey, listen, I don't need this anything from you anymore. And then, what to do? I was just praying. And then after I met the people that were coming to work on the church, I went home quietly. And that day of all days, our staff, many people couldn't come, so my wife had to work. So birthday of me, I was only in the room, in the chilly room. <laughs> I was finding God, what do I do with this? What do I, help me. And so I was going through my list. If somebody can do some surprise, then God said, take heart. If you will do this thing, take heart and do it properly. So when he called it on, I told my wife, don't take his call. Then I could see from the whole family. Then what do we do? I said, all of us, let's wait. Tomorrow by this time, God will speak. And you know what happened? By the next morning, I felt that was yesterday. I felt so severe on my right eye. So my wife said, no, wake up and let's go to the hospital. And you know, when you want to take me to hospital, we have to fight a letter. That is the last thing I will not give in easily. But at long last, I follow my dear wife. She took me to the hospital and we met a very sweet, nice eye uh, doctor. That lady is so sweet, so much, so that as soon as she even took me through some things, I was already healed. And then, you know, we, we, we came home not knowing that all what happened on my eye was, the eye was dried. Dryness of an eye. So it was like a stick was on the eye. And we, he said, that, then what will happen is, in order for my heater not to go, in order for the heater not to go on my eye, I should buy some jelly, put it under my eye so that the eye can close not to gather. I'm trying to say all this. If somebody like me, at this time of my 57, 57, my five means grace, and the seven means completion of troubles. Do I take this? And I was going through this. But let me tell you, the good God gave me a level of patience. I was calm. I was not thinking even about myself. I was manning how I can provide for Yeshua and the children and the rest that the place is warm. I went to here, buy another heaters. This fills and the heaters were powerful. So it was tricking off our current. It couldn't catch it. But I was calm. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this experience to share something with you. How to handle it in the midst of turbulence. Then, Saturday morning, I called one parent that came in my mind. As soon as I called him, he said, what? Oh, what the parent was doing, he left it and he came to our house. They came and tried all and he couldn't. And then he called another person. And as soon as the another person came, 
He went on the machine. He went on the machine. He said, Pastor, when did this happen? I said, it happened last Friday. He said, if you had called me on Friday, this problem would have been solved. But listen to me. Shop doesn't open today. On Monday morning, I will make sure that this thing will be solved for you. And I said, what will be my call? He said, if you like the old system, you just give me $200. If you want me to fix a whole new system for you, say it, how much? $400. I said, do you mean $2,000? He said, I said $200. When he said $400, I said, do you mean $4,000? He said, I said $400. I said, Mary, are we believing what we are hearing? He said, I am the expert in this field. I own a whole big company. I run it with only one boss. I will come and fix this for you. I said, Mary, you see why I told you don't mind these people. All of you, you were turning against me. Holy Spirit was saying, oh yes. And they were right. They were right. In just a midst of cold and you say you are praying. Every woman of that type, if you don't take care, will ask for your truth. But I contain myself. I tune to the Holy Spirit. I say, put everything aside. Let's find a permanent solution to this. I said, I have no cause about this guy wants to take us for granted. I have no excuse to accuse him. But I feel in my belly, we should wait. All of them couldn't understand me. But when this guy came yesterday and he broke the news, my wife said, this your patapa God is with you. <laughs> I, 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 it's not anything big. Excuse me. If I can pay 4000 or 2000 to get myself a hit, then excuse me, I've been ungrateful to God. But the experience around, what God was teaching me even in the midst of this is what I want to share with you. And this is how this time things are going to happen. Sometimes some will happen in the way that as if act, act, act. Just take your time. He says we should take in. We shouldn't be anxious. We shouldn't run the, the things in the ship into the sea as if that what made the, sh the ship float. In the midst of things, please, let's look to the face of God. Even if it's in business, even if it's in marriage, even if no matter what, please, God permitted this in my way. And it helped me to pass this course so that I can share it with you. He is with us. And, and you know, from, from all this Friday, no matter what, praise the Lord, I have my peace. And this peace surpasses all understanding. I have a wonderful family. Whether birthday party, no birthday party, we are happy. We are all enjoying. We, 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 we are stay together and we are stay put. You see, the only way the devil will feel to destabilize you is to find a means. Is to find a very good song that you like dancing. But if you can ignore that devil, I won't dance this for you. He will pray and pray and pray and his music will go kick. And God will show up. He said, we will have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I mean, I, I, before then, I, I went to hospital, when was it? was Wednesday, Tuesday, for my personal checkup. And when they did everything for the first time, uh, my eye doctor noticed that, uh, what do we call it? Bla yeah, glaucoma. He said that is an African's, uh, it is with an African's. And he has noticed it's small. So he's going to put me on study for six months and see if he sees any enlargement, he will handle it immediately. And yet, when he did all the tests, he said, but you've been coming here all the time. We haven't seen anything about you. So all when I came home, I was telling my wife, this is what the doctor told me. This is what the doctor told me. And it was creating an anxi uh, anxiety. But when this happened on Saturday, when the dryer came to dry my eye, 
And we went on Saturday. What did the doctor say? He said, I have done a better checkup than you did last when, Tuesday or so. You are perfect. You are good. All you need is just to have some drop. Your eyes just need a lubric lubrication. Yeah! Uh, you see, then some, some, uh, some happiness started coming in me. I started to become happy. And even when we were going from the hospital, I was singing. I was singing. I was rejoicing. I got home and said, get me something to eat. I mean, it was like the best of my birthdays I have ever celebrated. It's an experience. It's a coach that has come into my life to train me to know how to walk on the sea, even when the sea is bustering. And I, I like that course. I want to take it. I, I can promise maybe sometimes some of the roarings, boom, will come. Yes, that is life. But to me, this is the character I want to build myself. This is the habit I want to build myself. I want to start to learn to listen. I want to start to learn to see what God says. And the breaking news I'm also going to share with you. God is saying that for the heavens that have opened to you, they are going to be dreams. Amen. Dreams that will receive interpretation. Hallelujah. Um, I want to share something with you. Little did I know. You see, all the time... In order for big things to happen, listen, I call, I call one of my people here and I shared with him. And when I was sharing with the person about some of his business plans, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell on me as if I was fighting against the devil. I'm telling you, I don't know why. And after I took the person through the council, God led me to anoint him and prayed for him. After he left, then I said to myself, ah, is it a cancer or you were fighting? And I saw I was down in the Holy Spirit, not knowing the evil spirit that is hindering that person from reaching his goals was in present in the time of our, our talking. And the Lord raised a standard upon me to break him. And God told me, watch and see. After these prayers, things will start to flow. Amen. That's why I was saying, in everything, don't be anxious so much, but in prayer, that's what I'm referring back to. And then after I did that to the person, then I said to myself, maybe he might not take the initiative. So I will take it myself. So I called some people, and at dawn, we came to meet in the office here. I was discussing, how does this go? When this, how, what does this go? I wanted to have more knowledge so that when we meet in next meeting, I will know how to conduct it. Then after we spoke and everything, then with all what the guy said and brought on the table, after he left, then the next time we spoke on the phone, I have got something before me that people ask me all the time. What are you going to do with? What are you going to do with? And I had no clue and answer of what I'm going to do with that thing. I don't want to speak so plainly. So you would, but you will get me. But after I discussed that person's issue with the man, and he left, I had an answer for mine. At once, I got to know what I was going to do with mine. So when I called him on the phone, and I said, do you know, Mr. Uh, engineer or architect or something, do you know about this thing? He said, Pastor, who told you about this? I said, after you left, this is what dawned on my heart. He said, Pastor, I have also talked about this same thing for you. So leave it with me. I will meet with certain people of certain level and we will discuss it and come and meet another time. I say, oh, is that not that when you give unto God and God says he will prosper you? Listen to me. God never have carried money in the uh, in, in, uh, portfolio to come and give to you that big man. I said, I will bless you, take it. But what I know, God will bless you with an idea. He will give you an idea. 
And I dear that even as we are sitting here, there's going to be an inventor. And I dear that all this time you've always been going and coming with your wife. You never know what to do. But your wife is so loaded and blessed, but you have no eye to see. And I dear that there's going to be enlightenment. Something will pluck from your eye and you shall start to see clearer. So when we take certain level, when heavens open to us, after we have blessed the Lord, the thank you we say to God, that is what he gives to us back. Somebody must say we're coming to make a thanksgiving for God. But let me tell you, it is the time we are coming for God to bless what he has blessed us with. When I get happy and excited with things, I really try to say good things. I really start to prophesy. I really try to make the atmosphere something that one can enjoy with. And I'm telling you why I say breaking news. Next year, people that will see you will see you to be a different person. Oh, wasn't it a breaking news when they saw the blind man and when they saw the lame man who had sat so long and one day he was leaping and jumping? Wasn't it a breaking news to him? Wasn't it a breaking news when they saw the blind man that has sat for a long time and they have used a clay to open an eye? Wasn't it a break news? It's your turn. 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 You, 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 you have tried so many means. It's not like, maybe some people have tagged you as a lazy person. Some people have tagged you as you, do, you, are, you are useless for nothing. But the breaking news is that is the time you are going to start to do new things. So something is happening now. Something are different now. Some things are different now. Things are going to turn around in a different course. Hey, those that are schooling, expect uh, AA plus credits. Oh, those businessmen expect doors going to be open. And if nothing at all, I why they don't make their mind known about you. But let me tell you, they are not with you. The breaking news is this is the time of favor. Yeah. Oh, you didn't hear. <laughs> oh, my Jesus. It's a time of favor. It's a time of favor. Let 100 applications be on the table. Favor will take you first. You, you, have no, you, have no, you have no way for protocol. Favor is your protocol. God will cause things to happen. God will cause favor in your way. God will cause things to be trending for you. God will show forth. If it's not a favor in this very scripture, let me tell you. After Abraham, let me give you a clue. After Abraham intended to give Isaac a sacrifice, whether or what, no matter what, we obey God and give Isaac a sacrifice. If you like, read the book of Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13, if I'm right. He said, Abraham, I swear by myself. Do you know the Bible says we should not swear? But when he came to say, I will show forth. Let somebody read so that we know, get what is there. When the Bible says, God says he will show forth, he said, Abraham, I swear by myself. Bless that I will bless you. And I said, why do God swear? That means he has nothing better again to refer to than to himself. That was the, uh, 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 excuse me to say, uh, uh, um, I mean, a level of open door of no comparing to anything. So I'm trying to say that God has determined, God has purpose, God has decided to bless you. And when that hand of God comes upon you, that is where we see a favor. A favor came upon Ruth in such a way that when all women were trying to pick from the field, they said, Ruth, you don't need to go and pick from the field. Come and lay at the feet of Boaz. Listen to me. You've been hearing Boaz all the time it is your other sister. All the time it is your other friend. All the time it, they are for white people. All the time they are for green people. All the time they are for middlemen. All the time they are for the corporate and dead rest. But this is the time it's for you. This is the, your time. This is your time. For your obedience unto God. Yes, I mean, <laughs> he said, I mean, can I read it for you? Is that what you brought? I mean, were you able to, if you can get it for us, I still want to read it from the book of Hebrews, 
chapter 13, 6, verses 13. Let it be louder and see what is there. So that if God has sworn to do this, if God has determined to do this, if God has purpose to do this, then let me tell you, there is a breaking news. And I'm telling you, after maybe Abraham returned from the mountain, Sarah could see that this is a man that God has blessed. It was a breaking news about him. Let somebody with a powerful voice read for it. Is that what is there, if I'm not mistaken? Go. When God made a promise to Abraham, he could not swear by anyone because all the things were small, small for him. And God swore by himself saying, surely, the surely alone is a swelling by itself and let alone swelling adding to it. I will bless you. And I will multiply. Look at blessing alone is enough. And adding multiplication to blessing. Oh, somebody should make some noises unto the Lord. I want you to wake up from here today. That you shouldn't be anxious about anything. I emulated and gave myself an example. I had every cause of right to be furious, to say, well, today is my birthday. What is going on? To be, I mean, tossing up and down. But God said, listen to me. This is my word for you. After you have stood and have pleased me, after you have given to me, when you see the problem, when you see things coming, do not follow them. Do not follow that crazy person that has come for you or crawl from the bed bathroom. With your nakedness. But look to me and in everything take me into prayer. I will not permit the devourer to take what belongs to you. I will show you people that are with you. And people that are not with you. And bless that I will bless you. You know, this the, is our repairer. I'm not here against and speaking against someone's work. Oh, trust me. My wife, trust him. Ooh. When I talk about him, my wife's eyes will be rolling as if you are so prejudiced. And I said, let me keep quiet. But you see how the Holy Spirit vindicated me. Yesterday, she came to me and said, Pastor, when you say anything, I will believe. When the guy told me about the cost of the price he would take to do it, I said, maybe I didn't hear it. Well, come and tell my wife. You see, this is the year God will find a way to interpret things to you. God will find a way to work with you. God will find a way for people even to agree with you. God will seize what's been leading you. You know, sometimes something's been looting us. Something's been snaring us. Something's been taking from us that even we don't see. You know, the reason why we're not picking up food is because of leakages. God will block all your leakages. Amen. He will. He will. He will. He will. So I have no match, and you all agree with me that I'm somebody who says, if I, can, I will preach, I will preach. But when I determine that this is for God, and I want God to speak his prophecy to his people, I don't want to dilute it. Hallelujah. I don't want to add off mine. So please, let's all be on our feet. Give us from Philippians chapter 4, starting from verses 1. Please, let's be on our feet. Please, if you can. And let's read the words there. Take the words there to console yourself. Take the word there as coming from the throne of God and advocating and advising you. Pick it. Somewhere you will hear some things. Let God speak to you. This is not coming from me. Somewhere you will hear that he will tell you, I will supply all your heart. When I get there, I will embrace it. I won't let any of you take it from me. That God is supplying my needs. Oh my goodness. No president on planet earth can provide this. Therefore, let's together go. Let's, excuse me, let's start, let somebody read it with the microphone so that those, our listeners by uh, tape can also be benefit of what we're doing. So sometimes when we do things like this and with our phones, I mean, it left the hearers off. So you read this and after this, I'm done with the message and let somebody take the word and run with it. Take your time and read it carefully so that the hearers will be benefit. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Philippians, Philippians 4, 1 
Start on with the quotation, say it right. Go. Philippians 4, 1 to 11. Yeah. Therefore, my beloved and long for brethren, mm. my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Beloved, I implore idea and implore synthetic to be of the same mind mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I urge you also, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow workers, whose name are in the book of life. Let me take just one second, then you continue. You know what this was about? Paul was addressing the Philippi church, and there was a controversy. Some of the women and the men. And Paul was telling them that you can't get all men to be equal. So, beloved, try to learn to live with people. That was what he was addressing. So, if we will progress, if the marriage will be where, if the work will go where, don't think everything overnight is the way you like it. But learn to work with things. That was what Paul was addressing. Let's go. Verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Mm. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. Yeah. The Lord is at hand. This here, he was trying to advise them that the gentleness is where when you even you are under provocation. And you keep it, calm. you keep your composure. You understand me? I'm not saying it's not going to happen because you have given harvest. Please. And I'm not saying because I am saying it won't happen to me. I need your support. I need your hold up. I need us to hold ourselves. Coming here is a year of dignified church. And these are some of the things that have to be seen about us. People have to see gentle faster. Yes. You like that for me? Oh, yeah. I receive it for you. Amen. God bless you. And this is what Paul was talking about. Learning how to me be gentle in the midst of turbulence. Go, man. Verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, mm. with thanksgiving, mm. let your request be made known to God. Mm. 7, and peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Mm. Finally, brethren, whenever things are true, wherever things are noble, Whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate of these things. Text, just a minute. Do you know by training and getting a, a habit is by maturing your character? And it depends on the things you focus on. So he was saying that don't focus on the negativities. Focus on things. I mean, who will tell you that this America we are things won't happen? Who will tell you? I mean, excuse me, who can stop them? Let me tell you. The Bible says when God created heaven and earth and he saw that the earth was in what? Chaos. In chaos. Even at his, the creator's own nose. The earth was in that. So are you the one who can do better? But God was gentle applying the Holy Spirit and putting things right. So here he is saying that train your character, train yourself, train your business, train your wife, train your husband, train the church. Let all of us be together and focus on the good side. Things that are true, things that are pure, things that are noble, things that are lovely. Oh, uh, my, my, you sang for me, you love me, I will love you more. Mm. Yes, that are things we got to focus on. Because there is no way you, oh my goodness, I'm preaching so nice. Maybe just next week, there can be boom. Hallelujah. But we still got to work on. Because we got to show love. Oh, somebody will say, Pastor, what has this got to do with harvest? If we can practice this thing, 
Because we will be home, we are the best marriage couple in the whole world. Now, so no names are also so our personal problems. You see, Bible, say, your Bible, a foot to her is for our own good. This is the best to live and live happily and peacefully. He said, if there are any things that needed, focus on this. Don't focus on dollars. Don't focus on the rest. What about you got all the dollars and you get hypertension the next day and they call you in the six feet? God forbid. But I want to get life and live and enjoy. Can I hear amen? amen. Let's finish it. Go. The, the things which you learn and receive and hear and saw in me, these do, and of God, of these will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, good, but you lack opportunity. Mm. Not that I speak in regard to the need, for I have learned in whatever state I am mm. to be content. I know how to be abased, mm. and I know how to be abound. Mm. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, mm. both to abound and to suffer need. Jesus. I can do all things there through you Christ. There you go. That's what I call for you coming here. You will do wonderful things. Amen. Because you have overcome all predicaments. The rest will be blessings. Let's go. Nevertheless, you have done well that... You share in my distress. Mm. Now you Philippians. Now he is referring what you did to merit those promises he was saying. So you know you did not come to give to God just in a vacuum. There is a resource for you. God bless you. Let's finish it. Go. Now you Philippians. You know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, oh, Jesus. no church shared with me concerning giving. And receiving but you only. Mm. And so? For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessity. Thessalonica was where Paul confronted with problems so much that question, he ran away. Some people told him, Paul, if you don't run away, you'll be killed. And even in this circumstance, the Philippian church was supporting Paul. Weren't they worth to be blessed? So listen to what God will tell them now. Go. I want, it to be, I want you to know it's coming from God. It's not coming from me. So that you would take it. Please, go. 17. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds mm. to your account. Mm. Indeed, I have all and abound. Mm. I am full, having received from Ephrodites, mm. Aphrodite, the, the things sent, sent from, from you. you. A, a sweet, sweet smelling, smelling aroma. aroma. An and acceptable, acceptable sacrifice, sacrifice well pleasing to God. Woo! Ma, 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 ma. Well pleasing to God. Is that all? Go. And, and my God, God shall supply, supply all your need, your need according, according to, to his, his riches, riches in glory, in glory by, by Christ Jesus. Jesus. Now, now to our, our God and Father, Father be glory forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. That's your reward. Now let's be on our feet. Thank you. Thank you. Go into your heart. This all we've said is not by power, it's not by mind, it's not by any psychology or any man's uh, manipulation or try or training. The Holy Spirit says he will help you. Go into your heart. Talk with Jesus. Talk with him. Talk with him. Tell him some things. Commit all into his hands. We all learning. We all training our character. We all training ourselves. We all breaking the back of the devil. Things that have been hindering us. God says he has dealt with them today. And today is forever ended. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is furious at the end.